caused by the curve in space time. Uh, let us think of this as the Earth. And this is my as space time. When I drop the Earth on space time, what happens? Space time curves. Because the Earth has mass, right? And when I drop something with less mass, such as the moon, what happens? The moon orbits around the Earth in an elliptical path. This explains the orbitation of the moon to the Earth and the Earth to the Sun and the Sun to the black hole in the middle of our galaxy in Sagittarius A. So, but one might uh, want to ask, why does the orbit get smaller and smaller and crash into the Earth? Why does the orbit of the moon get smaller and smaller and crash into the Earth? While in real life, the moon does not crash into the Earth, yes. But this can be explained because in the year 2015, a group of scientists launched a satellite which measured the distance from the Earth to the Moon. They found that each year the Moon gets closer to the Earth by a few meters, about 2-3 meters every year, because the distance between the Earth and the Moon is uh, 110,000 kilometers. So about approximately 50 million years later, the Moon will crash into the Earth. So, in the same way, uh, the theory of gravity was proven wrong in the year 2005. Uh, uh, when the group of scientists launched a satellite named Gravity Probe What is the theory of gravity that you are telling that is proven wrong? The theory of gravity which was uh, said by Isaac Newton that gravity is an innate force meaning that it comes from within an object. Mm -hmm. So, it was so how did this prove wrong? Because in the year 2005, a satellite named Gravity Probe was launched. This satellite carried the church. So, do you know what a church is? Uh, a gyroscope is a constant spinning machine which has a straight axis. If the theory of gravity, as said by Isaac Newton, that gravity is an innate force was correct, the axis would remain straight because space has no gravity. But when measured after two, two years, the axis was tilted slightly, exactly as predicted by Einstein's theory of general relativity. So, it proved that gravity is not an innate force, but an illusion caused to the curve of space-time. And using this equation, Stephen Hawking defined how a black hole is dark black in color. So, let me give you this illustration. When I shine light through space, it moves in a straight line, because light moves in a straight line. When I drop something with less mass, such as the Earth on space, what happens? It receives light, because light can reach it. But when I drop something with very much mass, such as a black hole on space, what happens? Does it still receive light? No. Because it contours space-time too much that time and space itself are bent around it. And light cannot reach it because light cannot reach a contorted space because light moves in a straight line. This is how uh, Stephen Hawking defined a black hole is black in color. This effect is known as the gravitational lensing effect. The black hole itself does not receive light, but the space around the black hole receives light. This can be seen in this picture here. The black hole itself is black in color, but the rim of light surrounds it. This is because the light can fall on the space which is curved around the black hole. So, this is known as the gravitational lensing effect. And, uh, Stephen Hawking was further researching on this topic, but he unfortunately died in the year 2017, so his research could not be fulfilled. <coughs> This is the theory of relativity's most basic equation, E equals mc squared. What Einstein emphasized with this one was that in order for anything to move at the speed of light, anything in mass to move at the speed of light, it must first be converted into energy. And anything with, that moves at the speed of light is energy, because anything in order to move at the speed of light must have absolute zero mass, and energy has absolute zero mass. But that can be further debated because quantum physics says that energy has about 0.0000.1% mass. For uh, in order to move at the speed of light, one must have uh, close to zero mass. So uh, neutrinos are objects which can, which can move at the speed of light. Higgs boson particles can move at the speed of light because they have close to zero mass. Mass is having exactly no mass. no mass. Yes, but nothing in the universe has exactly no mass because everything in the universe has very little mass, if not no mass. Yes. Uh, I don't think so because in the year 2000, uh, what you said, sir. Uh, uh, yes, sir. It is.
what happens there when it's accelerating the gas? In the hydroglider, sir, uh, photons are accelerated at the speed of light and crash into one another, uh, which breaks space time. And fractions of space time are uh, in the form of rays uh, distributed all over inside the machine, uh, which is trying to prove the bulk particle, also known as Higgs boson particle, which was produced by Peter Higgs in the year uh, 1963. The Higgs boson particle theory is that in order to have mass of an object, if an object has no mass, there wouldn't be the universe because mass is what keeps the universe together, which gives us the effect of gravity. So the Higgs boson effect was also carried out using Einstein's uh, theory of general relativity. It states that in order for an object to have mass, it must first move through the Higgs boson field, which is a field surrounded by Higgs boson particles, also known as the main purpose of my uh, project is that for people to let know that the theory of relativity can predict how the universe started and how it will end. Well, the other uses of this equation are there are endless uh, uses of this equation. Uh, for example, using this equation, the atomic bomb must be. The atomic bomb was used in the wrong sense, but actually it can be used to generate free energy because anything with mass can be converted into endless amount.